What you and I are both looking at right now is five plots and one bar chart. Why this is important, and it'll make more sense as time goes on. Along the y-axis, you see percentage activity. That percent of activity is a reference to something known as, in short, MPRO or main protease. That main protease is a response to or SARS COV-2, I should say in relation to SARS COV-2. What you're noticing along the y-axis is a zero to 100% in activity, a reduction or rapid reduction in activity in vitro, not a living organism, it could be a test tube petri dish, in vitro in response to some very common food items, nutraceuticals, green tea, cacao, muscadine grapes, and dark chocolate. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to focus primarily on green tea and muscadine grapes. But look at this. That's a reduction in activity of the main protease of SARS-CoV-2. That main protease is required for SARS-CoV-2 to replicate, to assemble itself, and to reduce it down to 0%, completely inhibited, inhibited it with green tea and uh, basically muscadine grapes, at least in vitro. I know many of you think, well, this is just way too easy. Now keep in mind, being in vitro, it has to be carried out in animals and in humans to validate the particular results we see here in the lab, but still just the same. Take the personal bias out as far as thinking this is just too simple and think of it more like algorithmically where the outcome is the outcome regardless of saying, hey, is it really that easy? Well, we don't really know yet. But how are though? That's darn promising. To proceed as follows with the research, and we'll come back to it in a second. Because I want I want to go into detail uh, basically about the main protease, and then these charts will make a lot more sense. But to proceed as follows. Chemical compounds in foods can inhibit a key SARS-CoV-2 enzyme. Chemical compounds in foods or beverages like green tea, muscadine grapes, and dark chocolate combine to and block the function of a particular enzyme or protease. In the SARS-CoV-2 virus, according to a new study by plant biologists at North Carolina State University. Now we're going to go to the MPRO. In this study, North Carolina State University researchers performed both computer simulations and lab studies showing how the so-called main protease, MPRO, remember the y-axis, and the SARS-CoV-2 virus reacted when confronted with a number of different plant chemical compounds already known for the potent anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. MPRO and SARS-CoV-2 is required for the virus to replicate and assemble itself, quoting the researcher, quote, if we can inhibit or deactivate this protease, the virus will die. I know you hear the word die, killing a virus, a virus alive. I'll put the disclaimer there. But to proceed, computer simulations show that the studied chemical compounds from green tea, two varieties of muscadine grapes, cacao powder, and dark chocolate were able to bind to different portions of that main protease. So I'm going to go back. Here are those plots. So we're looking at basically MPRO and SARS-CoV-2 is required for the virus to replicate and assemble itself. The y-axis, 100% activity down to 0% activity in response to green tea and the muscadine grape varieties. And pro and sars cov is required for the virus to replicate and assemble itself. Quote, if we can inhibit or deactivate this protease, the virus will die. There's your chart. But now to proceed. Given that ECG, EGCG, and PB2 are characterized by the main plant flavonoids in the cacao and dark chocolate extracts, the inhibitory activity of these two extracts resulted from these compounds. We further compare the inhibitory activity of all extracts at 100 micrograms a milliliter tested. The results showed that the extracts of green tea and the two muscadine grapes com varieties completely inhibited the M proactivity in the extracts of cacao and dark chocolate reduced M proactivity by 40 to 50 percent. Now we are going to go into the full study itself a little deeper and Stay with me on this because there's some incredibly, incredibly interesting information in reference to SARS-CoV-2 in this one particular section. First off, the first line. Again, 
I am quoting how the researchers write something and from their perspective whatsoever. I leave that up to you to speculate, but you'll understand exactly what I mean right from the first line to proceed as follows. Currently, the humans are placing hope, a hope on vaccines. However, no effective vaccines are ready for prevention. I right, keep in mind, in, in defense of the researcher, when you hear something being 100% effective, 95% effective, whatsoever, you really have no perspective to work from. And they talk about disease transmission, infection, severity of the disease. What do they mean by 100% effective? Does it mean you had an effective result? Did it reduce severe uh, disease completely? It was 100% effective in reducing severe disease altogether? Or is it 100% effective at reducing severe disease somewhat? you got to ask the question beyond just the words of 100% effective. So that's what the researcher is talking about before I proceed. The potential risk of vaccines remain largely unknown. Making matters worse, more studies have shown that the originality and the transmission of this contagious virus are more complicated than, than humans know. Third person. Studies have shown that in addition to aerosol transmission, this is important. Aerosol transmission is something you often hear denied too. What that means, you're not talking droplets any longer. You're talking aerosolized. You're looking at uh, size below five microns, uh, which could be uh, complicated matters in reference to facial wear. The birds are seen as follows. The virus can be transmitted through gastrointestinal infection uh, and can be stably stayed for three hours in the air, 72 hours on plastic and steel surfaces. In addition to causing lung disease, the virus basically has been found to cause other health complications, such as abdominal pain and neurological abnormality. Now, keep in mind, too, from an epidemiological standpoint, one reason, basically, that our Asian populations or cultures may not be, have been affected is, for example, the high consumption of fermented foods, positive bacteria, green tea, uh, culturally pronounced, Honeysuckle tea, which has been shown to uh, reduce the M, uh, microRNA and responsible for SARS-CoV-2 as well, and a myriad of other aspects. But again, just so you can get the perspective. To the whole world's surprise, now this part is incredibly, incredibly intriguing. Even though the video is not on this, but still, it's an interesting thing to take away. To the whole world's surprise, one newest study revealed that SARS-CoV-2 existed in wastewater that had been stored in Barcelona, Spain since March 2019. Think of your timeline. The time of which was nine months earlier than the first report in Wuhan. This finding implies that SARS-CoV-2 might have been transmitted in humans before the outbreak. In summary, no medicines can treat COVID-19 and no vaccines can prevent this contagious disease. Therefore, effective treatments and preventions are urgently needed. What is implying there are basically lockdowns, restriction of travel, so on and so forth. If it was there since March 2019, then a lot of these pandemic mitigation uh, factors, which may work really well at the first signs of an outbreak, may have been nine months too late. But to proceed as follows. The extraction. It's important. This is how they extracted basically the materials from the green tea, cacao, muscadine grapes, uh, dark chocolate, so on and so forth. I'll leave that up there for a couple seconds for you to pause. And now we're going to proceed to the conclusion from the full study. And of course, as always, the DOI citation will be there for you to follow. Conclusion. Both docking simulation and in vitro assay showed that catechin 3 o gallate, different varieties, I'll just go through, epicatechin 3 o gallate, epigallocatechin 3 o gallate, epigallocatechin 3 o gallate, proacidinin, B1, forgive me, and B2 inhibited, the M pro activity, the main protease of SARS CoV 2. Moreover, I want to read that again. Inhibited the main protease activity of SARS CoV 2. Moreover, these compound rich extracts of green tea, muscadine grapes, cacao, and dark chocolate also inhibited the M pro activity. To reiterate, given that there is not an effective medicine for the treatment of COVID 19 and not a vaccine for preventing against the SARS-CoV-2 infection and transmission. Important takeaway there. Again, a lot of people have this misnomer how effective these vaccines may be. Doesn't mean they're not effective, but people may have over embellished uh, in their own mind the outcome on a societal level 
as opposed to a data-oriented level. These data recommend COVID-19 and vaccine not preventing against the SARS-CoV-2 infection and transmission, which is trying to give you an idea from the perspective of the researcher. These data recommend that these nutraceutical compounds and extracts of green tea, grape, and cacao can be utilized to interfere with the devastation of SARS-CoV-2, quote, end quote. So there you have it. An incredible combination of other food items. From an epidemiological standpoint, when we look at Asia, and for example, if you follow us on Saturday, when we look at the data analytics and reference to the rest of the world, you look at Singapore, Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, and so on and so forth. I know the initial selection bias is to basically look, oh, distancing and face mask. Well, that's not the case with a lot of these places which are very dense population-wise. And then we go to the face mask. What if the face mask, not saying it doesn't work, but what if there are other factors involved in basically the pandemic mitigation, such as the consumption of green tea? Or in certain cases, muscadine grapes, cacao, dark chocolate. But amazingly, uh, from a cultural aspect, green tea. Honeysuckle was uh, referenced before with the microRNA. Uh, the hesperidin, the quercetin, particularly in food type items like lychee berry. Uh, the bacterial, the positive bacterial impact of fermented foods and mitigation of certain diseases and other ailments like that. What if basically something like that, or even just taking off your shoes before walking in a house, since it tends to be the floor, it tends to be the highest area of, of uh, positivity in reference to SARS-CoV-2. What if it's just such certain cultural aspects like that are part of the reason why certain cultures, for example, seem to be faring so much better than other cultures, per se? Again, beautiful, beautiful science. Sometimes the answers are okay if they're really easy. If just consuming green tea at a certain level is effective, that's great. However, though, I don't want to add publisher bias. Still, I'd like to see some either correlation studies or uh, even better yet, some controlled studies. But still, positive, positive stuff. People are not powerless. Take some of these positive health traits, which are being correlated potentially with helping people. Vitamin D, uh, basically melatonin, so on and so forth. Uh, as far as the nutraceutical aspect, food-based aspect, again, reiterating green tea, honeysuckle, so on and so forth, uh, UV-22 lights, you name it, you know, if you want to go ivermectin or the monolaurin, what, not laurin, the other one uh, that just came out recently. But otherwise, there are positive things that can be done to help a person, and still, you can play it safe at the same time. But why not hedge your bet? Do something healthy. Eat healthy. Take some of these healthy habits. Again, without adding too much publisher bias, gratitude, DOI citation will be there for you to follow. Again, if you want to follow us on Saturday night, you can see the data analytics we run through from a different side as far as the data mining is concerned. Uh, just to give you a different perspective of what works in certain cultures and what doesn't, uh, what mitigation strategies should be effective, which ones do not. And again, if the research is correct and sars cov 2 uh, was originally found in wastewater in Barcelona in March 2019. Then you really have to reevaluate lockdowns, travel restrictions, and so on and so forth. By the time it was finally noticed, this product makes pretty much propagated most, you know, most everywhere. Again, Rafael Channel signing off. Thank you. Gratitude. Look forward to see you all once again next week. The OS stations will be there. You can follow. Just the same. Thank you for watching. Catch you all next time. Bye.